In the first level, the beach, there's tons of Butterfree scattered from the start of the level to the very end. And there's three separate sections where you can get good photographs. The three locations include the flowers at the beginning of the course, Snorlax sleeping halfway through, there'll be two flying above his head, and in the last place, there's a big bridge that you cross where there's a bunch of Butterfree. Although you can get a pretty good shot at the beginning of the level and you can get more points over Snorlax, my advice is going for a three shot over the bridge. Now this is not easy to do and you'll probably have to try multiple times, but if you can get three to appear, that's the best way to max out your points. Make sure when sending in your photo to Professor Oak that you select a photo that has all three Butterfree in the photo. And also make sure it's centered as well. That's how I got this incredible score. Next is Pidgey, which are flying all over the beach area. And right away you have three in the beginning of the level when you're doing the tutorial for the first time in the Zero One. You also have Pidgeys popping out of the tall grass with Meowth. And also towards the very end, you have them put a gust move on Meowth. In my experience though, the best Pidgey shot is at the very beginning of the level. You want to do six C button presses to the right or left so that you're doing a 360. Now the Pidgey should be right behind you and you want to continue those quick C button presses but this time you want to go back and forth. Wait till the first Pidgey's right above your head and he starts posing and that's when you snap the photo and you should get really good scores. I've seen people get even higher scores than what I got, but you want another Pidgey in the photo along with a really close up shot, and that's how you maximize your score on Pidgey. What's very unique about Pikachu in Pokemon Snap on the N64 is that he shows up in four different courses. Right in the beginning of the beach course when you pass Doduo, you can throw some apples to the surfboard and get some really cool shots of surfing Pikachu where he does flips and poses. The best shot of Pikachu is on the beach, but it's not with him on the surfboard. Right after you pass me out, the first thing you want to do is start throwing pester balls all throughout the tall grass. Once you successfully hit Scyther with a pester ball, you should see two Pikachus down on two stumps. C button down as you approach to activate your flute, and you should see both Pikachus using thunder moves. Obviously get your shot as centered as possible, but make sure you have an action shot of both Pikachus in the photo. Then send it to Professor Oak for an insane amount of points and the best shot of Pikachu that you can possibly get in the game. The pose and special alone are worth 1300 points each. Throughout the beach area there's four different Meowth, whether it's running from the tall grass, trying to escape some Pidgeys chasing after him, or even making faces from you from the top of a cliff. You can pester ball Meowth to knock him out, which is a very funny animation. And you can protect him from the Pidgeys, which will make him start dancing, which is the secret to getting the best shot of Meowth. To get the best shot of Meowth, the first thing you need to do when you're passing the sleeping Snorlax is hit him with a pester ball while he's hanging out on the top of the cliff nearby. Directly after you land a hit on Meowth with the pester ball, you want to start using your flute. Directly after you pass the cliff, make sure to start spamming photos because dancing Meowth this close is the best shot of Meowth you can possibly get in the game. Make sure to select a photo where Meowth is in the entire frame since he's bouncing around so much and that's how you maximize your points and get the dancing Meowth pose bonus of 1200. One of my very first memories of Pokemon Snap is watching a Doduo jump scare the heck out of me as a kid from behind the first giant mossy wall on the left. If you follow his path, you can watch him basically run around the palm tree area and circle back and start running across the entire beach. And trying to figure out when to get the best shot of him is actually pretty difficult. Getting the best shot of Doduo revolves around using your dash engine in the beginning of the level, going right past Pikachu and waiting for him to pass him as well, hitting him with a pester ball and spamming photos. Making sure you get the whole frame of Doduo in a large size is very difficult, but with enough trial and error you should get a fantastic score and the pose bonus of oh you hit him which will give you an extra 1300 points. That's how you get an amazing picture of Doduo. While watching my guide videos, you guys will notice that not every video is going to have the perfect score. Although I'm going over the best shot, getting the perfect score is a lot of trial and error. For this video though, I am going to get the perfect score. On the beach, right after me out, 
you'll see a pink ball rolling around with EV chasing it. This is Chansey and this is the only spot and opportunity for you to get the best shot. In my opinion here, the best shot to get of Chansey is to throw an apple as it passes right by that last stone boulder and throw another apple and as it jumps for joy, spam photographs. The most important part here of getting the best possible score is sending a photo to Oak where the egg is slightly coming out of the pouch. This will give you the jolly pose bonus and maximize your score for the best shot of Chansey in Pokemon Snap. Once you unlock the ability to use apples and pester balls in Pokemon Snap on the N64, you have a lot more opportunities to get really good shots of Pokemon, and even new shots of Pokemon that you weren't able to get before. The ferocious and large Kangaskhan is one of those Pokemon. Getting a perfect score with Kangaskhan is very difficult, but getting the best shot uh, isn't too challenging, so all you have to do is hit Kangaskhan with an apple or pester ball. I like to use the C button because I think it slows the cart down a little bit, and then use your polka flute to get him dancing. And once he starts dancing, unleash a barrage of photos on Kangaskhan, making sure you get its entire body in the frame, and make sure you select that photo as close as possible to send to Oak to make sure you get the most points possible. His dancing pose with the flute gets you an extra 50 points for the interesting pose bonus, but every point counts, so it's important. Back at the beach level, past where Meowth is on the cliff, there's a ton of flowers, bushes, and tall grass. This is where Scyther is hiding. The only way to even remotely follow where Scyther is in the tall grass because we can't see him is by following the leaves that are flying in the wind above the tall grass. Eventually throwing enough pester balls, you will eventually hit Scyther and he'll come above the tall grass, but it's usually very tough to get a good photo of him, so here's my strategy about how to get the best shot. As Meowth pops out of the tall grass, peg him with a pester ball and start spamming pester balls to your left in the tall grass. Eventually Scyther will pop out right in front of your face and you want to get photos as he's slashing his claws and that'll give you the extra fighting pose bonus points. Size is very difficult with this one but keep experimenting and you should get a lot of points. Getting the best shot of Lapras is a multi-photo process on the beach. Once you pass Pikachu and Butterfree on the right hand side you should also see a palm tree to the left of that palm tree is going to be the first Lapras. Snap a quick photo of it. After you pass Snorlax, there should be a Lapras much closer. Make sure to snap a photo of him. And as you see Meowth and Pidgey running, there should also be a Lapras in the distance. Make sure to get another shot of the one in the background. Right as you approach Kangaskhan, turn to your right and start snapping photos of all three Lapras in the shot with the focus on the biggest one in the front. Make sure to choose a photo where all three Lapras are present and also make sure the Lapras' head is completely up and straight and that'll get you the relaxation pose bonus. This photo can be tough to get. Don't be afraid to try multiple times if the Lapras are not all above the water. And don't be afraid to also use your dash engine. It might help. To find Eevee in the beach area, all we have to do is travel back to the spot where we got the photo of Chansey. The Eevee is chasing the pink ball around these big boulders. We need to find a way to get the Eevee to stop to get the best photo. So the first thing you have to actually do is get Chansey out of its ball state by throwing an apple or a pester ball at it. I like to throw it at Chansey when it's coming around the final boulder, and then all you have to do is snap some quick photos of Eevee jumping to get the highest score. When you get the photo mid-jump on Eevee, you get a pose bonus of happy so it's important to make sure he's in the air when you select the photo it's hard to miss Snorlax in the middle of the beach course he pretty much takes up the entire area under the two Butterfree next to the flower bushes you can hit this hungry sleeping giant with a pester ball to have him wave at you and go back to sleep but the real way to get the best shot of Snorlax involves using your flute and a very specific song on the flute to boot. My advice for getting the best shot of Snorlax on the beach course is by waiting until you get to the very end of the cliff where the high grass starts. Press C button down three times to activate the flute and get the right song. On the third song, you'll see Snorlax do like a shoulder shuffle. Get a shot when he gets as close to you as possible as you can see in my photo and send it over to Oak and you should get the nice pose bonus of Jolly Dance. For whatever reason, Oak really likes Snorlax dancing to the last song.